What's up, everyone? In this issue of Platinum Tech, we see if Ford's straight six Barra engine has what it takes to be better than the 2JZ and RB30 blocks. After we released our RB30 versus 2JZ block comparison video, we had a whole bunch of people on our YouTube channel and social media saying Barra is best, test the Barra, hashtag Barrage, Barra the world. We love your enthusiasm, so we got ourselves a Barra block, thanks to the guys from Hoonshoon, so we can put it through the same tests as the RB30 and the 2J. Now, for our viewers outside of Australia that don't know what a Barra is, it is a four litre, straight six, double overhead cam engine that's iron block with an alloy head, and it was designed and built right here in Australia by Ford Australia. Now, it can be found in anything from a Ford Falcon taxi to a Territory SUV, and all the way through to the Ford Performance vehicles Typhoon and the XR6 Turbo, which it's so well known for. Now, the Barra is known for being big, heavy, but making a bucket load of torque, and obviously being a four litre can make plenty of power very easily. Now, please bear in mind that the comparison and the tests that we're doing are for the block only. We're not looking at the heads, we're not looking at any other ancillary parts that bolt on, we're not looking at any of the rotating assembly, it is just the block and its ability to handle horsepower. Now before we have Herman from Platinum Racing Products perform the tests on the block, we catch up with someone that has a whole lot more experience with Barra engines than we do. How's it going guys? I'm Joe from Hoonchun and I've been working on Barra engines for about 10 years. So the first block came out in a BA back in 2002. Since then they've made some small revisions but essentially it's the same block. Uh, whether it's NA, Turbo, Territory, they're, they're the same casting. The only small differences were uh, dipstick holes um, and a, a water jacket to cool the transmission. Yeah, now we're pretty happy to use whatever block in whatever car. Yeah, so we go head studs over 400 kilo in a stock motor uh, and that'll happily take you up to around 500 kilowatt. But the block itself um, it's not an issue there. Head studs, 916 head studs uh, at about 1,000 horsepower. Grout is the same sort of story. It, it's, it's an option. I have gone over 1,000 horsepower to the tyres without it, um, but for that safety factor while you're there, uh, it's not a big issue to, to put it in. Uh, just put an oil cooler on at the same time to, to keep the temperatures down um, in the bottom section of the engine. Yeah, so we haven't broken any box over 1,000 horsepower. We've done probably 15 over 1,000 horsepower uh, and well over 300 uh, below that. Uh, with no issues. We've made around 1,700 horsepower the crank uh, without an issue. The, the block wasn't the issue. Other performance shops um, showing mile an hour of over 2,000 horsepower um, and I believe they're running into other issues, not the block, so cylinder head issues um, and, and things like that, but yeah, not the block. Yeah, I, I'd say, yeah, that 2,000 horsepower um, mark, we'll, we'll probably start seeing some billet barrows, but uh, up until now we haven't hurt one and we're going to keep pushing the cast blocks until we do. So physical size, they are quite a lot larger than say your RBs and, and even the 2Js. Two, two They're longer, wider, um, yeah, has its pros and cons, but they are bigger. So trying to fit it into a, a Skyline or whatnot, it can be done, but it's a lot more involved. Um, as for price, so you, know, you can pick up a, a complete Barra motor, doesn't matter whether it's NA or Territory or whatever, you can pick them up for about 350 bucks from the wreck, it's complete. Um, and from that, we can use the block, the crank. Uh, the Barra heads are, are identical um, throughout. So the BABF were slightly different to the FG. They, they made a bit of a swell design to the ports uh, and combustion chamber differences. Uh, but essentially, they will swap over and you can use them in any. For, for our bigger cars, for example, Massimo's you know, 1,480 horsepower at the rear wheels. Uh, Barra block started out, out life as an FG uh, NA taxi engine. We use the block, the crank, um, the head casting is the same. Then we changed things like timing gear and timing change, stuff like that for the you know, heavier duty springs and, and uh, valves and stuff like that. But the, the main castings are, are all factory forward uh, from a, a taxi. Looking at the Barra block, the first thing we notice is it looks big. Pulling out the measuring tape, it is 50 millimetres longer than an RB at 670 millimetres and 20 millimetres taller from the bottom of the journals to the deck. And although it looks much wider, it's only 5mm at 250 With the ancillaries and head bolted on though, we're assured the Barra is much taller and longer again. Looking at the design of the block externally, there is a lot of ribbing and reinforcement on the outside compared to the 2JZ and RB, something that would definitely increase strength and resistance to twist and cracking without adding too much weight. 
The oil pump outlet is 14 millimeters, slightly smaller than the 2J, but bigger than the RB30. Bearing width is the same at 22 millimeters, and the area around the main journal seems to be reinforced quite well, just like the RB and 2J. Although individual main caps are prone to walking at over a thousand horsepower, also like the 2JZ. The fundamental design looks strong, so let's get into the tests. The internet has asked us to do some testing on a Barra engine. I don't know anything about them. This is the first time I've actually had a good look at it. Um, before today, I hadn't actually done any sonic testing or hardness testing or had a real good look at the block at all. I've had a, a little bit of time to go through some of the bores on this one, so I knew what I was talking about, so I could pull some averages for you. And um, it was an interesting exercise. I'm just gonna run through some sonic testing now. I'll just do a couple of spots on the first bore, which is the same as what we did on our sort of RB videos, about 5.4 here, which I had earlier. Uh, the thrust side of the bore is actually really good. Average is about six and a half. It tapers up towards the top on that ball, which I found interesting. Then um, being a good thing, cylinder pressure being up the top of the cylinder. Roughly five on the back wall and between the bores. It starts to get a bit thin. I had uh, 3.42 was the lowest, up to 4.8 up the top. So it gives you a good idea that these are cast, like the RBs, all over the place. They seem to be thin where the bores meet each other. Um, not that they touch, they're not a Siamese bore, which is also fairly consistent with our RB30, they're the same. So all in all, after testing it, I had a couple of thin spots, 3.15 here, about an inch and a half down the bore, that's a concern. Three mils our sort of benchmark. So I mean, it's still a good block, no issue making a thousand horsepower, there's no problem, but uh, if you were gonna go and, and oversize it, you're gonna go bore it out, that's an issue, you'd need to offset bore it to um, make sure you maintain a bit of structural integrity on that front wall there. Uh, and all in all, um, fairly similar to the RB30, an average of five mil on the back wall, six mil on the thrusts, and between three and four mil between the cylinders. If I had to rank them, um, it'd be very close to an RB30, not as good as the 2J, and it all comes down to hardness, but um, RB30 is still a pretty good block, so um, I see why it makes the numbers. Okay, now we're gonna do the deck thickness on this. On the RB series engines, all the 25, 26s, the 05Us, 23Us, 67 series, which we'll get into a little later, uh, we had a rough eight mil. On the N1, we had nine. Uh, on the 2J, we had 10. On the RD, we had 13, which was awesome. So now we're just gonna check out this barrel. 13 mil, really impressive. This is definitely gonna help with splitting the bores from up the top. Usually bores sort of split an inch down the bore. It's hard to know whether it starts from the top or from the bottom because you're not there while it's happening, but um, it definitely helps having that extra meat up the top there. So that's a really good feature from this block. I've also noticed that there's quite a lot of webbing and it's a wide block, which is definitely gonna help with block twist. And all in all, with all our oil galleries the way they are, it's got quite big oil galleries, all the webbing, it's a big, sturdy block, it's, it has merit. So you can see why, again, uh, these blocks make the power that they do. I'm pretty impressed with it. Okay, ready to test the barra block. We're gonna do a hardness test. I've chosen the back of the block because I've got a nice even surface and I've got a lot of metal underneath my testing area. The front, there's some water jackets and stuff in the way which gave me a fairly false reading. I can usually hear how hard it is and it tested better than I sh thought it should. So found a better surface up here. So whenever I test a barra, if I keep testing barras, um, I'll be testing them on this surface here. I test all our RBs in the exact same spot just to get consistency. Two forty, two fifty five, two fifty four, two fifty one. The average is two forty nine on this block, which is pretty consistent with uh, a really good quality RB twenty five, twenty six, or uh, a slightly below average RB thirty. But still, it's a pretty good block. You can see all the effort that's gone into the outside of the block for webbing, which is um, which is pretty unique. I like it. Last test is we're going to weigh this thing. 
Feels about the same as an RB30. It should be heavier, so let's suss it out. Let's not forget our main caps. We've got a discrepancy with some bolts, but neither here nor there. 69 kilos, we're about a kilo off plus some bolts. Call it a kilo and a half. Yep. I was expecting that to be heavier, to be honest. It looks heavier. It's definitely bigger. It's 50 mil longer. It's wider. And it's, I guess it's a bit bulkier to handle. So yeah, I did expect it to be heavier, but yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Well, the numbers are in. The Barra block is great, but in no way does it excel over the Japanese blocks. The only area it wins over the 2JZ is capacity and price. It doesn't suffer from cracking like an RB can, but its bore thickness and hardness are more in line with an RB30 rather than a 2J. No doubt the extra ribbing and bracing on the block helps with strength as there aren't many reported cases of cracking. At this point, the 2JZ has the runs on the board at the drag strip, but the mighty Barra is certainly a tough block and although it's bigger and heavier, it's also cheaper and more capacity means more torque and easier power. The facts are there for all to see, but no doubt each engine has their own fans and will be chosen for their own reasons.